So I'm here with uh, Del Fendry, he's right here, uh, the gentleman behind me. And Del is an icon in the piano industry, has uh, developed pianos for all, many manufacturers uh, and still has many ideas. And we just decided that we're going to discuss a couple of new ideas that Del has. I have been studying the changes in our society and I, I'm not sure that our industry, our piano industry, is keeping up with what's happening in society. Um, the pianos we're building are essentially the same pianos we've been building for the last hundred years, and yet our society has really changed. Uh, we're more mobile people. Families move regularly. I have the statistics in my article, and I, when I looked them up, I was astonished to find out how many families moved every year. Pianos are hard to move. We maybe should give some thought to making pianos easier to move. That means reducing their weight. For example, a five foot five grand piano can be made that takes up less floor space than the modern four foot eleven grand. You have all the advantages of a longer piano with a more aesthetically pleasing shape, a, a shape that will fit more, more nicely, more, more aesthetically well into the modern home. Um, it'd be easier to move. It would cost should cost no more to build than the comparable 4 foot 11 and yet have a much higher level of performance. You can see this, the sweep of the bridge curves this way and then right in about here it starts to curve back. And right down here it curves back significantly. That's called foreshortening. We don't know exactly where that idea came from. The best I've been able to trace it historically, it goes back to the early fortepianos when builders were trying to get a little more low bass performance out of a flat string piano, so they started to put brass wire in the bass. Brass wire has a lower breaking point, so it broke a lot so they made them a little bit shorter, they hooked the bridge around it. And for some reason we seem to have kept that, even though we don't design, we don't build candles that way anymore, and we don't have that problem, but we still kept that hook. What that means is that you go through a tone change from the middle of the piano into the low tenor, and then we, trans we transfer the, the moving portion of the soundboard from here to here in adjacent notes. Action in a short piano. Um, the action rotates around a, a, a balance point that's, that's fairly close to the front of the key, so there's a, a, quite an arc of travel. Um, I'd like to move the balance point uh, back just a little bit, which means that you'd have to play around with the geometry of the action to get it to work. But the idea is that you would get the feel of a longer key in a short piano. <laughs> And a quick, that also would mean reducing the size of the hammers somewhat. Less to, weight. To take some weight out of the, the hammers, giving you a more response. This is a small piano, it's not supposed to be a concert piano. Right. It goes in a, in a smaller room. Let's design it from the beginning to fit into that smaller room, both aesthetically and acoustically. If the piano is less powerful, but you give the pianist better control over the softest pianissimo, that pianist player, piano player will invariably say, this is a more powerful piano. Why? Because the range that you've given them goes from here, here, to here. In other words, it's not as loud at the very top end, but as you increase the pianissimo, even if you don't have the, the maximum volume level, the pianist feels like... So let's start from the beginning and say, we're going to make this piano available with two keyboards. One is the standard six and a half inch wide octave, let's say a six inch wide octave. I don't think it's practical to offer three or four like some are asking for, but, but two so, to do that though, we have to reduce the width of the head scale. Excuse me, the, uh, the, the strike line, the, the 
uh, scale stick. Mm -hmm. We have to reduce the width of it. If we do that, then we can reduce the amount of key flare that's necessary to bring the keys a little bit closer together. And you can then very easily offer a reduced width key set, um, charge a premium, and make it available as, as a standard option. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your thoughts. <laughs> I guess if somebody has a question, they can contact you, right? We're gonna put the we're gonna put the email address right on this video below, <laughs> and so uh, you're, you're, you're you're answering emails. Okay, I do. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dale. Thank you so much.